Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. The Mighty One God, the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to where it sets. From Zion, perfect in beauty, God shines forth. God says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the rest of the past night and for the gift of a new day with its opportunities for pleasing you. Grant that we may pass its hours in the freedom of your service, and when evening comes, give you thanks again. Amen. Psalm 14 The fool says in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They do disgusting things. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all the children of Adam to see if there is anyone who understands, anyone who seeks God. Every one of them has turned away. Altogether they have become rotten. There is no one who does good. There is not even one. Don't any of these evildoers understand, those who devour my people as if they were eating bread? They do not call on the Lord. There they are, they are terrified, because God is present in the circle of the righteous. You try to put the plans of the poor to shame, but the Lord is their refuge. Who will provide salvation for Israel from Zion? When the Lord restores his people, let Jacob rejoice, and Israel be glad. The Word of the Lord. A reading from 2 Samuel chapter 6. David once again gathered all of the 30,000 specially chosen men of Israel. Then David and all the people who were with him set out and went to Bala Judah to bring up the Ark of God, who is called by the name the Lord of Armies, who sits above the cherubim. They transported the Ark of God on a new cart. They brought it out from Abinadab's house, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart with the Ark of God on it. Ahio was walking in front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with all kinds of instruments, castanets, lyres, harps, hand drums, rattles, and cymbals. But when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah reached out for the Ark of God and grabbed it because the oxen stumbled. The anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his irreverence. So he died there beside the Ark of God. David was angry because the Lord had burst out so violently against Uzzah, and he called that place Perez Uzzah, as it is called to this day. David was afraid of the Lord on that day. He said, How can the Ark of the Lord come to me? David was not willing to move the Ark of the Lord to himself in the city of David. So David diverted the ark to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained at the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months, and the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and his whole household. David was told, Because of the ark of God, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him. With rejoicing, David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David. When those carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, David sacrificed an ox and a fattened calf. David danced with all his might before the Lord. He was wearing a linen vest. David and the entire house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of a ram's horn. When the ark of the Lord arrived at the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. When David finished presenting the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of Armies. He distributed one loaf of bread, one cake of dates, and one cake of raisins to all the people, 
to the whole crowd from Israel, to men and women, to each and every person. Then all the people left. All of them went to their own houses. The Word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, yet at least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense to those who examine me. Do we not have a right to eat and to drink? Do we not have a right to take along a wife who is a believer, as the rest of the apostles do, and the brothers of the Lord, and Cephas? Or are Barnabas and I the only ones who have no right to be spared from manual labor? What soldier ever serves at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat some of its fruit? Or who takes care of a flock and does not drink milk from the flock? Am I saying this just from a human point of view? Doesn't the law also say this? Yes, it is written in the law of Moses. You shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading out grain. Is God really concerned about oxen? Or does he say this entirely for our sake? Yes, it was written for our sake, because the plowman ought to plow in hope, and the thresher ought to thresh in hope of getting a share. If we sowed spiritual seed for your good, is it too much if we reap material benefits from you? If others have some right to make this claim on you, don't we, even more? But we did not use this right. Instead, we endure everything so as not to cause any hindrance for the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who do the work in the temple eat food from the temple, and those who attend to the altar receive a portion from what is on the altar? In the same way, the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel are to receive their living from the gospel. But I have used none of these things. I am not writing this to have it done this way in my case because it is better for me to die than to let anyone deprive me of my boast. You see, if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast about, because an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I do this as a volunteer, I receive compensation. But if not, I have been entrusted with the responsibility as a steward. What then is my compensation? to present the gospel of Christ free of charge when I preach it, instead of making use of the right I have when I preach the gospel. In fact, although I am free from all, I enslaved myself to all, so that I might gain many more. To the Jews I became like a Jew, so that I might gain Jews. To those who are under the law I became like a person under the law, though I myself am not under the law so that I might gain those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, I became like a person without the law, though I am not without God's law, but am within the law of Christ, so that I might gain those who are without the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might gain the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that I may save at least some, and I do everything for the sake of the gospel so that I may share in it along with others. The Word of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray that you would so guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, 
we may not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen.